they told me you're going to ask me some questions. I don't know. Are you going to ask me any questions? Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but the first question was, do I smoke? The second question was, could that character uh, exist nowadays uh, with all these regulations about smoking? Uh, to answer the second question first is, absolutely, because this character didn't care a hoot about what regulations there might be about smoking. He smoked in emergency room hospitals, for God's sake. He smoked with oxygen coming out of tanks that could blow up, and he still made a cigarette. So I think, yeah, I think uh, nothing was going to stop him from smoking, but personally, I did stop smoking. Uh, I smoked until I was about 40, and then with great effort, I quit smoking, and then somehow 17 years later, I was offered a part of a character called the Cigarette Smoking Man. And I thought, can I do this? And I thought, well, it's 17 years since I quit. I'm good. So they asked me uh, when I did the first uh, episode, they said, uh, you know, we've got these herbal cigarettes, or you could use real cigarettes. What would you like? And I said, well, you know, I'm an actor. I quit on go. Give me a real cigarette. That'll be fine. So I smoked two real cigarettes for the pilot. How do I spell it? And the next episode I did, I smoked real cigarettes. Uh, one R, I think. And then I found myself sitting at home thinking, gosh, I wish they'd call me again for that X-Files show. <laughs> and then I realized, that, no, no, I can't miss this. And I smoked herbal cigarettes after that. They're awful, but they're not addictive. First of all, I want to say it's an honor to meet you and my wife in the next month's chapter. And the question I want to ask is, if you were offered a part in a future x Files movie, would you accept it? Well, we all know, like Chris Carter said, you can't really kill the devil. Well, I, I, if, if I were offered a role in, the, in a future x Files movie, uh, of course I would accept it. And then it would be a lot more successful in the last x Files movie. Uh, 
But just because you asked me a question, I'll tell you an answer to something else. Uh, this has to do with conventions. This was the back of the show. But, um, you know, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't recognize all of you. You haven't all been over to buy an autograph picture yet, but I assume I'm going to see you all in a few minutes after. But anyway, uh, this one, uh, the first time I was in Texas, and they have an accent in Texas. Uh, and uh, so I asked this person, well, what's your name to put on the, on the picture? And he said, Rio. I said, what? He said, Rio. Rio, I said, how do you spell that? And he said, B-I-L-L, -L, which is my name. <laughs> But in Texan, I couldn't recognize it. I wondered if uh, the X Files was made in the nineties. Uh, uh, today, the, the whole landscaping of the series has changed a lot because now they're like big business, you know, like HBO series, all that big production values, more even so than movies. Do you think the X Files if made today would be different? That's such an interesting question because. Uh, I might have forgotten to mention this. Uh, I've written my memoir. It's a book called Where There's Smoke, dot, 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 Musings of a Cigarette Smoking Man, and it will be published in October, in case you would just happen to be book shopping at the time. Um, but in, in researching for the book, I went back and looked at a lot of early uh, episodes of X Files. It's surprising how, um, I don't want to say low the production values were, but they're not very, it's, it's, it's a pretty simple show. Um, and it didn't have a big following in its first year. It took a whole kind of cultivated audience of internet geeks, really, to kind of catch it. Uh, so no, I think X-Files would have been pulled after about the third episode if it was launched now. Then it was on the Fox, which was a, a fourth level network, and it could allow the show time to build an audience. And as we all know, they built a huge audience. So it does say something about how television production is done now compared to how it was done. Hey guys, I hope you liked this first part of the Q&A with William B. Davis uh, from the Antwerp Sci-Fi Horror Convention uh, on May 1st. I had a lot of fun and, and I hope you enjoyed it as well, despite the horrible audio quality, uh, for which I sincerely do apologize. Uh, I hope you liked it, make sure to check out the second part, I just split them up because I didn't want you to get bored after 7 minutes. Uh, so if you're still in the mood to watch the second part, make sure to check it out, or, or you can check it out later, of course as long as you watch it, because it's full of awesome, I swear. Alright, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Peace out.